Horse Alternative. There are many animals that have been used historically instead of horses for transportation, communication, and war. And there are many that could be used, but have their downsides. Taking a look at these is great for your understanding of human interaction with animals and if you are building your own fictional world. The best horse alternative is the donkey. Often thought of as stubborn and stupid, but really, rather good steed. They're actually stronger for their size than horses are. And the onager, the wild Asian ass, is quicker than a horse on its feet. Though, due to its small size, loads will have a greater effect on them. But donkeys have been used for a long time. In ancient Mesopotamia, in Sumeria, and in Akkad, they used donkeys to great effect drawing chariots in war and using donkeys in agriculture. The standard of Ur depicts this in quite detailly with these onagers drawing chariots in battle and onagers drawing carts in peace. We might say that these onagers are asses of war. No, that would make a great name for a metal band, asses of war. Besides donkeys, one can use camels. Camels have been used long for riding and for carrying packs. And they can even draw a cart, though it would be a rather bumpy ride in that cart. As we know how camels run, but camels are way better in the desert than horses, as they require less stops for water, as they maintain their water better, and have a hump, give them longer endurance. They also have secondary clear eyelids, so they can see in sandstorms. And horses have been said to run away in battle from camels due to camel's smell. And come on, Bactrian camels even come with a built-in saddle. Cattle can be used, rather than a standard bovine, water buffalo, or even yaks. There are often many societies, cattle races, like on yaks. And cattle are often used to pull carts. And they are much larger and stronger than horses. They are much slower. And a cart pulled by cattle would not be much faster than a man on foot, if at all. But still, it's a way to move a lot more material than one can on foot. For more northern climates, reindeer are a great option. Reindeers have been used to pull sledges and even to be ridden. They can pull carts if one desires, and they would do better in the cold than any of these other animals. Also, reindeer if there's moss or lichen or anything on the ground, or any plants on the ground, they'll eat it. Meaning, you do not have to carry your supplies for your animals with you. Llamas work as well. We might say they're small, woolly camels, as they are relatives. Llamas have been used to plow, and people have ridden llamas, and they can even draw a cart if you desire. Llamas also come with wool. That's an added benefit, along with the fact if needed, they can be butchered for food, and they provide milk for food as well. But they also have wool. That is rather helpful for clothing. And let's not forget that llamas are very protective. That can be an aid at times. Now there are some that are not perfect, but can also work relatively well. Like goats. You might think these are demonic beasts, but they can be quite helpful too. They've been used as pack animals before, and they can draw carts. You might not be able to ride on a goat unless you're relatively small, but they can still draw a cart well, and they are not picky when it comes to food. In mythology, Thor's chariot was drawn by goats. If they're good enough for Thor, they're good enough for you. Dogs can work well for drawing sleds and might be able to draw a cart, though you need a lot more. They also do very well in barren, cold environment, like the Arctic. Fish and other sources of meat are plentiful, but, but plants are relatively rare. Zebras can work well. They're kind of like donkeys, but they have their own disadvantages. Zebras are notoriously bad-tempered, as has been found when people have tried to domesticate them. People have had them pull carts. They've even ridden them, like these German soldiers in German West Africa. But they have those temperament issues, and they're also rather skittish. So they have those disadvantages. But if one puts the time in, they can do it. Elephants have also been used to ride and to carry burdens. And why need a cart when they're that huge? They are carting themselves. 
But elephants take a long, long time to mature. There's a reason why they only are tamed, not domesticated. Also, elephants require a great food supply, and despite their size, they're rather skittish. Notorious for running away from small things and even slight injuries. But at least they come with built-in weapons that can be upgraded easily. Ostriches have been used to draw carts and to ride, though they're rather small and fragile, and would probably snap their legs if tripping over a stone. So maybe not the best choice if you want them for war. But there are some even odder and less likely options. Neil Diamond in Guns, Germs and Steel covers many points on what makes animal either good or bad for domestication. Yes, it's not perfect, but it covers many of the basics on why you would choose some animals over others. These I'll talk a little bit about with these next animals, and you can find that book down below. What about lions? Yes, that is right. You see a person riding a lion. This has happened multiple times. They could be ridden. They could be used to draw carts. Though, come on, they're cats. How often do you expect them to follow orders? And what do you expect if they're grumpy with you? I don't think that's going to go well. But I guess if you're a Norse goddess of love, beauty, fertility, and war, they're a great choice. You may also come to hippopotamuses. They are big. Sure, they must be able to draw great weights. And they are relatively fast despite their size. And come on, that thing charging at you, you will run. The thing though is, hippopotamuses don't really like anyone. Just look up people riding hippopotamuses or pay hippopotamuses. It's not a pleasant story. Though it's possible, just not pleasant. And they need a lot of water. That could be a problem. Giraffes can be ridden too, and I imagine they could draw a cart. But they're fragile. They're not your standard herd animal. Making them harder to domesticate, as they do not have a leader that one can replace. And also, come on, that neck's a big target. But for laughs and giggles, why not use a giant tortoise? They can be ridden. I imagine they could draw a cart. But you're not getting anywhere anytime fast. Now you might be saying, what about rhinoceroses? They're huge. They're fast. They're armored already and they come with weapons up front. A person could get on their back or the button ride them. Why not use them in war? Why not use them to transport? And why not use them to draw carts? Well... For starters, rhinos hate everyone. Rhinos do not like being around other animals. They will chase anything away from them. Yes, you could get close to them, but it's hard, very hard. And they have horrible eyesight, meaning you will have to guide them 24-7, unlike most of these other animals, which will continue on the direction you send them, even if you're not directing them. You're not having rhino-based archers anytime soon. Also, rhinos, like elephants, take a long time to mature, meaning domestication will be a slow process. And rhinos are notorious at attacking those around them, even if everything is calm. So not the best choice if you want to stay alive. So I say it's best to stick with your donkeys, camels, llamas, reindeer, and cattle. But you can go with some of these others if you want. Even lions. Even lions. Though you might want to rethink that choice if you choose it.